Hello, welcome to the Simone Bailey Show. I'm your host, Simone Bailey, actress from such shows as Stargate, SG-1, Battlestar Galactica, Smallville, The L Word, and the video game Need for Speed Most Wanted. We have an amazing show lined up for you today. Joining us is the multi-talented actor, Mike Dopwood. But before we introduce our incredible guest, I would like to take a moment to welcome the fans and all of you tuning in at home and give a shout out to everyone on our live chat. Thank you all so much for being here. Today is a beautiful day and we are going to have an incredible show. I'm so glad you're all here. Right now, we have people tuning in from all over the world and I got a message from one of the fans from Australia who is 17 hours ahead and woke up very early to be here for our live stream right now. So I appreciate all of your love and support. Big hugs to all of you watching from around the world. I'm grateful to have you all here. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like and share this video and hit the bell icon for notifications on my new videos. All right, it is time now to introduce my featured guest, the incredibly talented actor, Mike Dopewood. Mike has a very impressive resume working as an actor and even as a stuntman in TV, film, and video games. Some of his credits include a series regular role on Power opposite 50 Cent. He's been on Dark Matter, The 100, Arrow, Stargate, Battlestar Galactica, Supernatural, Smallville, and huge blockbusters like Deadpool 2, the X-Men movies, and much, 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 much more. <laughs> Please welcome the one and only Mike Dopewood. Hello, Simone, how are you? I'm awesome. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Oh, this is great. Thanks for having me. I can't wait to do this. <laughs> This is so great. And um, to all the fans, I've known Mike for years and he is not only an incredible actor, he's a fantastic human being. So I'm so excited for this interview. I love this, keep talking. I can hear this all day. <laughs> oh, wow. We've got so many people in the live chat. Hello. There's Carrie Fisk. I see Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Carrie is Connie, Carrie. Connie Hardy. From Australia. Yeah. Wow, look at all this. This is oh. so cool. <laughs> yeah, we've got Connie Hardy. Wow, look at all the people. Oh, nice. Oh, and, and Paris, man of Mysteria. Oh, oh, there we go. That's so great. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool. And we'll be taking questions from the live chat uh, a little later on. Yay. Sounds good. Sounds good. So how are you, Mike? I'm awesome, you know, considering what's going on in this world, uh, I'm feeling good. It's uh, life is good. I'm with my family, so I'm good. I love that. Yeah. Yay. Um, so I want to get started with the interview. I'm curious to, to hear, um, tell the fans where you grew up. I grew up in uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Um, yeah, I was born there. My whole family was born in the former Yugoslavia. Um, and when they defected, they went to France and then they ended up going to Montreal. And I guess my brother was about seven years older than I was born. Yeah, he's seven years older than I am. So, you know, they had tried to have kids and nothing happened and they got to Montreal and uh, a city called St. Michel. And uh, I was born there out of the blue. <laughs> and um, uh, that's why they named me Michelle. My real name is Michelle. Oh, a little tidbit you didn't know, did you? No, I didn't know that. That's cool. So what were you like when you were younger? I was a fantastic kid. No, um, <laughs> I was a little you know <laughs> <laughs> I was an ugly duckling. Man, there's some pictures of me. I remember my teeth got broke by baseball when I was younger. And so I had all these crooked teeth. With a ball? Yeah, I got hit in my, brother, uh, my brother's baseball game. And, you know, I was playing, climbing on the fence, and I guess a foul ball went right in my mouth and, and broke my teeth. So um, it was funny. And my parents, we were poor, so we didn't have money to do much. So it was pretty funny. Uh, so I had all these 
pictures. And my dad was, you know, coming from Europe and I was the only kid going to a private school with a, to a public school with like my name embroidered onto my clothes. And I was wearing like a three piece suit to go to school, to public school. So I made a lot of, you know, I started a lot of fights or I guess I got into a lot of fights when I was a kid because people would make fun of me, you know, I had white, white hair. Like my hair was bleach blonde. Um, and the broken teeth and wearing these suits, it was just hilarious. Uh, I have some pictures I got to show you. So were the suits because of your parents' um, European influence or was it? Yeah, no, they, they thought it was professional. They thought it was, you know, they wanted their kids to look more professional, my brother and I. But, you know, not realizing that the different cultures, it just doesn't work, right? They didn't know. My dad didn't know what he was putting me through. And that lasted, I think, a couple of years, three years or whatever. And then after that, we started just wearing normal clothes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, funny though. Uh, and so your last name is French, right? No, it's Serbian. It's uh, Dopuj. Yeah, Dopuj is, is the original name. And then when my parents defected from Yugoslavia to, um, to Paris, they actually moved to Paris, mm -hmm. uh, they drop the, it's like a capital uh, D with a line through it and a dot. So now it's, they just dropped it. And, you know, my dad was just happy to get away from Yugoslavia at the time. Yeah. And uh, so they just put a D at the end. So oh, wow. that's why I got changed. That's interesting. I mm -hmm. did not know that. Mm -hmm. um, what other languages do you speak? Um, well, I speak French and I speak Serbian and English, I think. Uh, <laughs> none of them. <laughs> None of them extremely well, by the way. <laughs> I'm all, people always comment on my on my Serbian and on my my French, but uh, yeah, I get by, so I, I can speak those languages and definitely have a conversation in those in those languages. I love it. Uh, what sports did you play growing up? Oh, every sport. Uh, Simone, I, I loved sports and my brother was a great athlete. So I wanted, you know, there's nothing more I wanted to do than to be like my brother, um, my brother, Sam. And so well, his real name is Latko, but everybody could, nobody could pronounce it. So one day was hockey coaches said, a sacco, suko, I'm Sam. <laughs> so all of a sudden that stuck in my brother, you know, my, my dad, my mom, everybody started calling him Sam. Oh, interesting. Uh, so I was like his, you know, biggest fan. And, uh, and he was a great hockey player, baseball player, football player. So I played everything. I, hockey and, and football were my first loves. Um, but I played baseball, I played soccer, whatever I could play. I, I tried track and field, um, but football and hockey were my main sports. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Where did you go to university and what did you study? Uh, I went to Southern Illinois University, uh, the Salukis. Um, I played football there. <laughs> I played football there for four years, and um, I took physiology. I have a bachelor of science in physiology and a minor in international business. Because of the language thing, I was able to bypass all the courses because they just did proficiency tests and then, you know, a lot of my business classes, and that's what I graduated in. Were you on a football scholarship at mm -hmm. all? Yeah. Oh, you were? Yeah. Wow. That's really cool. And uh, you were a pro athlete. Tell us about your career in sports, because I don't think everyone knows about that. No, it was, uh, look, um, I was very fortunate to have a, a, a albeit short career in sports. But uh, yeah, I ended up going to um, Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the CFL, the Canadian Football League. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, go to Saskatchewan. Um, and I wasn't there long, I had some injuries, and then I got released, and then I ended up going to Ottawa and then failed the physicals there. I had a knee surgery and stuff, which uh, probably, you know, hindered my career. As a running back, I played running back, so it wasn't the best thing for me to have knee injuries um, at that time. But then after that, I was playing hockey. Uh, and I was playing when I was a kid, uh, when I was 16, 17, I played junior hockey in Montreal. And then when I got my scholarship to SIU, I stopped playing hockey. But I still, in the summer times, I'd play with my buddies. And fortunately, I had a lot of buddies that played in the NHL or in the American Hockey League. And uh, I was playing with them one year and, and one summer. And um, I was a bit of a physical player, uh, albeit, you know, some fights and, and hitting, really hitting, and then the occasional fight. Uh, and then I ended up going to Columbus, uh, Ohio, to play in the East Coast Hockey League for a little while. 
but you never instigated those fights, right? Never. Like, no. 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 You're not that kind of guy. Not at all. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, besides being tough in football and hockey, have you trained in any martial arts or fighting? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, I never really went through, uh, like a belt system, if that makes sense, you know, for some martial arts, but I did train in, in Taekwondo, um, Jeet Kune Do. Uh, a lot of it was, was more, uh, film specific. I did some boxing earlier on. Um, oh, we got people from Portugal. That's amazing. That. Teresa, hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, thanks, Warren. Look at all, this is all cool. Look at all these people. I'm seeing all this. Yes. Bonjour tout le monde de Paris et Montréal. All right, that's right. You can actually speak to everyone. <laughs> um, oh, there's Carrie. Hello, Australia. This is so cool. Oh, and Connie. No, oh, I love Connie. Um, what was I saying? What was I saying? What was I? Hockey. No. Did we get through with that? <laughs> I got sidetracked. I got sidetracked. <laughs> um, you too many hits to the head, you know. You go through a belt system, but you oh, have. Yes. That's right. I was asking about um, oh, martial, martial arts, arts and fighting and any fighting training. Yeah, and Jeet Kune Do, and I did some boxing prior uh, with some buddies in that, um, and that helped. You know, I used to work nightclubs and that kind of thing, so mm -hmm. uh, learned you know joint manipulations, that kind of stuff. When you work the door at clubs, you learn how to do things without just punching people, you know, or else you get sued and. Right. So you learn to just, you know, get people out of the room nice and quietly without. The you know. ultimate chicken wing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Wrist locks, that kind of thing. Um, and then most of it was geared towards film, honestly. Like if I was doing a show or a fight sequence and depending on what the stunt coordinators or producers wanted, um, then I would, you know, if I had enough notice, then I would go and brush up on those skills. And, and yeah, I mean, I sort of learned what I could and then uh, whatever uh, the show's called for, then I would train in that. Nice. How did you get into film? You know, it's a crazy question. I, I, um, I always wanted to. I always wanted to be in movies. So some people may have heard this before um, where uh, I watched Mad Max. My brother and I were really into B movies back then, you know, Escape from New York, Mad Max. You consider uh, Mad Max a B movie? Well, the, the original, the the oh. original with Mel Gibson was made in Australia, right? And it was it wasn't really a huge hit at the time when it came out. I think it became bigger, more of a cult following later on. And then with Road Warrior, that's when it, it really caught on. But so I saw Mad Max, and uh, I love this post-apocalyptic world. And I thought, oh my god, this would be so cool to do. And then I always had that in the back of my mind. You know, I wanted to be pro athlete first. That was my thing. But I always loved drama classes and I loved participating in, in you know, plays if I could sometimes at school or um, even in university. I did a small little thing, you know, just this dance thing. I can't even remember the name of it. But uh, I was like, this performing thing is fun. And then um, through football and school, uh, I did some commercials because of the teams. And we do commercials sometimes through like Special Olympics or events that were happening uh, where the football players from Southern Illinois would be there. So every once in a while we do these little commercials and I just love that feeling of, uh, of you know, action and, and speaking to people, being interviewed, that kind of thing. So uh, eventually, once my sports career was cut short, I literally <laughs> walked into the uh, union office and said, uh, I want to be an actor. What's the best thing? How do I get to be an actor? And they laughed at me, of course. <laughs> and I just said, no, I'm serious. Who, who are the best teachers? Who do I study with? Who are the best agents? Who are the best, you know, where do I get my headshots? What do I need to do? And, and that's how it happened. That's so cool. And we're so glad you did it. Oh, thank you. Um, so I want to go back to your stunt because you started in stunts. So as a stunt actor, you duped it out with The Rock Jason Statham, Vin Diesel, and Jean Claude Van Damme. If it were real life of this list, who would you not want to be up against? And then my second question is, who were of this was your favorite to work with? Oh, come on, you can't do that. <laughs> I know it's unfair. Yeah. Um, okay. Who would be the man? 
the, the toughest guy to fight. I might have to give it to The Rock because he, he is so big and athletic and strong. Uh, Jason Statham was, um, he's very talented as well. He's very quick. Uh, Vin Diesel was great. Uh, all the guys, who else was on that list that I, that I miss? Um, uh, Vin Diesel. Yeah, yeah, and Vin was great too. I, I'd probably go with The Rock would be the, the you know, the guy would be like, oh, great, here we go. Because he's so big, right? And I really so, want a hug from him. That's like my bucket list hug. Is it? Okay. Yeah, I, I'll I, see I what I can do. Before I die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. No, I haven't talked to him. <laughs> I haven't talked to him since I worked with him. I got yeah. a special request from Simone Bailey. She wants a hug. Yeah. Oh, we got one. Uh, Jason Momoa, another guy. Um, Who's that? Miles. Mr. Oh, Miles um, Woodfought, Jason Momoa. Yes, that's right. Jason Momoa oh, was great. And then we hit it all on Atlantis was great. Um, he's an excellent fighter, too. He's a great, uh, a great fighter. So that we really hit it off on that. It was great rehearsing with him because, I mean, look, a lot of times I rehearse with the guy's stunt doubles more than I do with the actual actor. Uh but when I, you know, as as an actor, I tend to do a lot of, you know, I fought Steven Seagal. I fought, uh, there's so many guys. It all started coming back to me once I remember. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, Jason was great. He was uh, really talented and quick, and uh, he picked up fights like that. Cool. You have over 176, which blows my mind, acting credits. <laughs> Nope. And tons of stunt credits. And as I scroll through your resume on IMDb, it's pages and pages and pages and pages long. Oh uh, do you think that your parents ever had their doubts about your career choice? Oh, I'm sure they did. Um, but I will say one thing. My dad was was pretty cool. I thought, you know, very conservative European parents, I thought they'd be like, Cause I quit, I ended up quitting a job. I was doing sales for ADB payroll systems. And I ended up leaving that because I took a chance on, on, on you know, my sports career was, was had come to an end, mm -hmm. tried to get in the corporate world, you know, to do the right thing, so to speak. And then something just kept bringing me back to acting. And then eventually once things sort of started clicking, but really I didn't know if I was, you know, six months after I started really focusing on acting, I said, you know what, this is what I want to do. And then I quit ADP. And so my dad was, was, it was pretty funny. He, uh, he just looked at me, he goes, well, you know what? I'm not going to say anything to you. You always do things your own way. You always find a way to make it. So I'm sure you'll be fine, you know? And that was his way of saying, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. You know, do your thing. So I did. And, and I think it worked out. I think it did. Yeah. <laughs> I really think it worked out, Mike. <laughs> Did you personally ever have moments where you thought of quitting the film business? Um, I don't know about quitting entirely, but there's times where, you know what, this industry beats you up. And uh, the film industry is a really tough one sometimes. And so, um, you know, all the rejection, and I don't care what any actor says, you know, you just deal with rejection, just throw it away. Look, every once in a while you get a project that you really love and you're human and, and you don't get it. Yeah. Or you have a bad day and things don't go your way and you're just like, oh, why do I put myself through all this stuff? Um, but having said that, at the end of the day, I'm like, what else could I do? Really, honestly, right now, I don't know what else I could do. Um, and it gets scary because sometimes, you know, especially with this, what we're going, what everyone here is going through, we don't know when we're going to get back to, to working and, and how much is it, you know, what's filming going to be like now? Is it going to be completely different? So it's scary, but yeah. yeah, there's nothing else I can do. So I'm in for the long haul. Well, we're very glad you are. Oh, you deserve to be. It's funny. I look at you and I, and take, please take this as, as a compliment. I look at you like the the Canadian handsomer uh, Bruce Willis. Oh, like in the way of a leading it. man, like action star. That's cool. I'll take it. I'll take it. I mean that in the best way. I, I truly do. Oh uh, no, thanks. No, that's a compliment. Look, if I could have his career, trust <laughs> me, I, I wouldn't say no to it. I know. Yeah, a lot of people wouldn't. Um, okay, so I'm just curious. Besides being a pro football player, what other jobs, and besides your sales job, what other jobs did you have before you were an actor? 
what other jobs? Man, um, well, my first job when I was, I remember when I was about 14 years old, um, there was this uh, cemetery that was close to our, uh, where I lived. And so a bunch of us to get a workout in, they would pay us whatever it was, three bucks an hour at the time. And we would dig ditches. We would dig graves. Three dollars an hour? Whatever it was. Yeah, 350 or I think it ended up being like sometimes they just pay us cash and give us five bucks, you know, an hour or whatever. But that was hard work. Man. And, and there was a, about four or five of us that would do that every once in a while. So that was one of my craziest jobs. Uh, digging graves okay i have to ask have you ever had to do that in a movie or a show and you're like i've actually done this for real no like, I'm actually yeah. <laughs> wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be funny no um no never had to i don't okay. think i have i usually die in these things so i'm the one that gets <laughs> buried you know i always get i, I always get killed i never get the girl right <laughs> oh, um Let's see, what else did I do? Uh, I worked at um, TaylorMade, you, you know, the, the golf company. I worked in a warehouse. Oh, um, yes. I did warehouse work for people. Uh, I worked in sales. Oh, 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 hold on a second. I thought I lost you there. There we go. I thought I lost <laughs> you. We're back. Um, We're back. <laughs> what else happened? Uh, I worked a lot, you know, bartended, but I worked the door at a lot of clubs. Um, I was a doorman at a lot of clubs and I'd always do that in the summertime, especially, you know, when I go to university and come back in the summer and uh, Montreal was always a, a great place uh, to live in the summer. So I'd always work the nightclubs. I'd work like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I'd make a ton of money at the door. So um, that was a good way to, to make money and then still be able to train because you'd work, I'd work from like 10 p.m. to 3, 3 a.m. And then people yeah. are slipping you money, right? Like, hey, get me yeah. into the club. And you're like, okay. Yeah, here you go. This way. Exactly. You know, you got to do what you got to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. What were some other jobs that you wanted to have? Uh, well, this is, you know, why, why things in life sometimes uh, – sort of lead you down a path right where i really wanted to act and, and but then i said no i've got to do the the corporate world i wanted to be because i have a degree in physiology uh bachelor of science i wanted to i was looking into pharmaceuticals and and like legitimate pharmaceuticals as far as you know being in sales with the drug companies that kind of thing that was you know when i was growing up i thought that would be a cool job uh but there was a major recession in montreal at that time in uh c94 1994, 95, and I ended up moving out here um, in 95 to Vancouver, and I couldn't get a job. I just could not get a job. And, uh, and some people were like, you're qualified, you've got everything. But what was happening is all these other companies were downsizing and or closing, and so all these guys that had 10 years of experience would get the entry, would take entry-level jobs. So I couldn't get a job. And then eventually I ended up with uh, ADB Payroll Systems, which was a Fortune 500 company, which is what I wanted to. I wanted to be with a good company and, and get great training and that kind of thing. But that ended up being, I think, a year and a half, and, and that was short lived. And uh, then I stuck to the acting and, and stunt work. Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> yeah. You played many roles on Stargate. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about your journey through the many series and how that played out starting with Stargate SG-1? Yeah. Um, Stargate SG-1 started with me doing um, stunt work on it. Uh, Scott Atia was the stunt coordinator on the show. And uh, he he's the one that sort of, you know, I, and I was getting into stunt work and acting as well, but uh, stunt work sort of took off. Like I started doing both at the same time, but stunt work sort of, I started getting busy right away doing stunt work, uh, which was great. And uh, so I started doing, you know, uh, stunt work and, and special skills work, uh, ex background work, extra work. I don't know what uh, it's called now. Um, background performer. Background performer. Or they're called background performers, yeah. So I would do some of that. They'd call me in and say, you know, do you want to do? And it would always be something specific like wearing, you know, those big serpent heads you know, um, or some action stuff that, you know, if they weren't going to do stunts for it, there would still be some little action. So I was doing that. And then eventually, um, 
I can't remember if it was Peter DeLuise who first saw me. Um, yeah, Peter's the best. And uh, he saw me doing a play and he was like, why didn't you tell us you're an actor? Like, you're like a real actor. You're not just <laughs> a guy that can say a line or whatever. And I'm like, oh, thanks. He goes, no, I mean it. And so he, that obviously gave me the the, the confidence and then eventually started auditioning more. Um, and a lot of the casting people thought I was a stunt guy. They didn't know I was doing plays and, and acting. So uh, then basically Michael Greenberg saw me on audition. He goes, you never told us you were an actor. I said, well, I did, but you guys knew me as a stunt guy, you know, on set. And I didn't want to, when, when I was there as a stunt guy, I wasn't trying to be an actor. I was doing my job as a stunt guy, right? Yeah. And then eventually casting started bringing me in and I started getting I got cast and then Michael Greenberg was great. He's a producer on SG one and said, listen, we're going to have you back. we got this one episode. I played um, Colonel Chernovshev, uh, a Russian Colonel. And he was like, I didn't know you spoke Russian. I said, not Russian. I'm Serbian. He goes, well, it works. You're able to do the, <laughs> the dialogue and stuff. So that was great. Uh, and then uh, Joe Malazzi was the main guy, I guess that had me coming back. He's probably the main reason why I was starting to come back more and more. Uh, to start at SG-1 and then S start at Atlantis and then SGU. Nice. Yep. All all the SGs. All the S. I know. I'm so lucky. Can you imagine? I was able to do all those shows. and, and You're yeah. one of the few that's been able to do that. That's a really rare occurrence, I think. Yeah. I, no, and I'm very grateful to those guys. They, um, uh, Brad Wright, all of them, they, they, you know, they were like, because there's times I was saying, you sure this is okay? Because I just did, or whatever characters. And they were like, don't worry, we'll, we'll worry about that with the fans. And, and uh, But the fans, I have to tell you, all the fans were great. They never really got upset at me. You know, sometimes they could they could be really angry if, uh, if people didn't, you know, it, people playing multiple parts, but they were really cool with me. So I'm really grateful and happy about that. Mm-hmm. On Stargate Atlantis in the episode Tracker, you got uh, to work opposite Jewel State as Dr. Keller. Yeah. Um, tell us about that role in Stargate Atlantis. Um, man, that was such it's one of my favorite roles that I was able uh, to do because, um, you know, uh, just working uh, with the Stargate people, I really they treated me with a lot of respect, which I always loved. And uh, and you know, the, again, that goes back to Joe Malazzi, and um, and and um, it was just one of those characters that I read for, read for, and I, when as soon as I read the breakdown for it, it, it reminded me of Mad Max. Nice, right? He was a runner, but in a different way, and he was running away from from the race, these aliens, and. Uh, that and was you got to wear leather. Yes, and I got to wear leather. Like yeah, I did when I first was on SQ One. That's right. That I'm always in leather. I was always in leather. Um, <laughs> and uh, so that was awesome. And and the character, and I really resonated with me. Uh, you know, this badass character that ends up being a caring soul. And um, so that to me was was, uh, was really fun character to play. Kirik was 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 a blast. And he, I may be speaking at a turn but uh, I believe he was supposed to come back um, as far as I know Joe Malazzi had talked to me about that and, and he had uh, he had mentioned potentially he was going to come back but then the series got cancelled so ah. which is why I believe I ended up on SGU I think they wanted to um, to go that way so yeah that's so great um, well, you clearly made quite an impression with the producers, Joseph Malazzi, Paul Molly, Carl Binder, and Brad Wright, et cetera, oh uh, because they did cast you as a regular in Stargate Universe. You played Varro. Tell us about that character. Varro was uh, just, uh, to me, was an amazing character. Again, this, you have this tough guy who's, you know, actually a killer, part of the Lucian Alliance. He's a killer, and yet uh, he ends up, he's a killer with a heart. Um, <laughs> so, which was interesting, because he ended up, yeah, right? Like, he ended up being a good guy, and, and, and everything he did, like, he didn't kill people just to kill people. It was, he was fighting for a cause, right? And every time something happened, that that's what he believed in. So when he was doing this, fighting for a cause, uh, he felt he was doing the right thing. So he ended up, you know, um, just... Like I said, a killer with a heart. Joe Malati came up with that one. Uh, 
And I just thought it was a great way to, to you know, really develop this character and to see the other side of, you know, because these bad guys are always shown as tough guys and, and it's nice to bring some humanity to them. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, it's funny, I saw an interview where Joe Malazzi said that he wanted your character, Varro, to allude to your past lives um, yes. as a bounty hunter, et cetera, as kind of a wink, wink to the fans for all of the other Stargate shows you've been on. Uh, and I personally thought that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it was funny, right? Because we, we at one point, I said, how do we, how do we justify all this? And then and Joe was like, well, you were part of the Lucian Alliance as the bounty hunter. And then, you, <laughs> you know, and then you ended up, uh, you know, being a runner because you were attacked by the Wraith and it captured you and you ended up escaping. Mm -hmm. And then you came full circle and came back to uh, as Varro, working again with the Lucian Alliance, but realizing that wasn't your, your spot. So then you ended up, you know, becoming part of the SGU crew, the Destiny crew. That's so great. Well, look at all these more people. This is awesome. Orville Nation, hi. Hi, guys. Oh, uh, thank you. That's so great. Well, George, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, Power was an uh, awesome place to work, too. <laughs> uh, you had a recurring role on the sci fi TV series. Dark. Yeah, sorry. Go, sorry. Dane. So, my son, just give me one second. Yeah, Dane. Dane. Okay, I guess they're okay. <laughs> So you had a recurring role on the sci-fi TV series Dark Matter uh, in season two. Can you tell us about your character and uh, how why that uh, role appealed to you? Um, yeah, and it was kind of a weird thing because we'd been in talks with Dark Matter for uh, a long time. Oh, thank you. I love you guys too. <laughs> World Nation, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, I played Eric's uh, Eric's Nero, uh, who was just basically this this another badass character that was sort of running in this prison that they ended up in. And, um, and, and working again, anytime, uh, Joe Malazzi and, and Paul Mully, anytime those guys call me, I'm there because they've always treated me with a lot of respect and, uh, I love their scripts. I love the writing. And, um, when I had that opportunity to do dark matter, I took it right away. And then the character, I knew they would be, they always write great characters. So, um, They're some of my favorite writers as well. I absolutely, agree. yeah. And so, yeah, so Eric's was a blast. And I think he was supposed to at some point come back. But uh, I know I was working and then Dark Matter, uh, unfortunately, got canceled. So that's right. Eric's was a man with a plan. I like this <laughs> call section. I that's love these a comments. That's cool part, too, to, to kind of run show in a prison. No kidding, right? What like, a fantastic role for you. He was in charge, right? And he and that's what I loved about him. Even though he's in jail in a major prison, the guy was in charge. He enjoyed his life. He had all the perks. He had his own drinks. Had his special food. So it was, it was awesome. That's so. If you're going to be incarcerated, you might as well do it with style. What did you film in, like location wise, or was that studio, or how was that? Was, that? Uh, that was mostly studio. Um, man, it's, it's, we're going back a few years now, three, four years, I think. Um, Mostly studio work, uh, but that was in Toronto. We shot that in, in Toronto. And uh, Hamilton, I know we, we shot a couple of exteriors out, out in Hamilton. Uh, but yeah, mostly studio stuff. So not a real prison. <laughs> no, no, it was all, and they did a great job. And I think uh, at the time, because it was the first episode of the second season, that was a major part of the budget was building this prison. Wow. Because it was, yeah, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, holy smokes. What was it like working with the Dark Matter cast? Oh, I have some photos I wanna share, yeah. Oh, good. Uh, they were great, uh, absolutely. I mean, Roger Cross is one of my best buddies, so I working love with him, him. Uh, was, was great. Uh, Anthony Lemke, I'd never met, and he was another, um, another great person, uh, fun guy to be around, uh, real talented actor. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's yeah. Cool. And, um, hey, Steph Chapados, one of my buddies is, is on. That's funny. Oh, that's great. Steph, say hi to your mom for me. Vive the West Island. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, let's see. Uh, but yeah, Melissa uh, uh, O'Neill was great. Um, Melanie uh, Liebird, uh, Sean 
She post was awesome. Y'all, the guys were great. There's Anthony. There's Anthony. Oh, is Sean Sipos. Um, and uh, yeah, again, they they took me in, open arms, uh, all those guys, and uh, we we just had a blast. We had fun. It was easy. It was not uh, no egos. It was just a fun time. Mm -hmm. That's great. Oh yeah. Sorry, I think. It's I think you cut out. No, I'm seeing, some, I'm seeing some of the comments too. Um, oh. oh, my character, uh, Vincent in 100. Yeah, that was a fun character to, to play as well. Hey, Carrie. Um, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, look, I, I'm so lucky. A lot of these shows where, where you know, um, the cast is already established and you come on. You know, it can go either way. Right? They could be stick to their own little bubble or they could be welcoming and for the most part they're always welcoming yes people are good yeah i want to take you back so it was a huge movie when it came out in 2007. can you tell us about your experience for oh, Working on 300, directed by Zack Snyder. You were a Spartan. Um, did you have any special training for that or anything? Oh, yeah. Um, to be honest with you, that's probably some of the hardest training I've ever done uh, for that movie, 300, and dieting. And uh, it's, so I had read for um, a couple of the characters, and I'd had a couple callbacks, and then it didn't go my way. And uh, but some of the stunt coordinator and the fight coordinator had just worked with me on on a movie called Dungeon Siege uh, in the Name of the King. And uh, oh yeah, there we go. Um, and so they, you know, they talked, and they needed some more stunt guys. You're totally shredded. I know. I know. God, miss those days. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually training hard again, so it's good. But it's harder when you get older, right? Um, it's hard to keep and maintain. But uh, this this whole quarantine thing has been great for that. I've been doing yoga every day and, and riding my bike and, and uh, my Peloton uh, and uh, just enjoying that. So feeling good about just eating and drinking a bit too much. But I think everybody's going through that in, in some ways. Um, Another version of self-care, right? Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, 300, I mean, we trained, we would get up at six in the morning, have like oatmeal and chicken breast as our food, and then go right to where I would start doing either lights or weight training. And they had a, a different system of, of sword fighting it is part wushu based, uh, which is tough for me with my knees and stuff like that. Uh, but we were able to get through it and um, it was really intense and they worked us hard. Uh, you know, all the stunt, the stunt coordinator, Chad Stahelski and David Leach and Damon Caro, they were really um, on top of it and they developed this fight system. So we had to train and every day it was, we trained and we would, you know, especially the rehearsals for the first couple of weeks was just nine, 10 hours a day. Plus you'd have to do your workout after that at night. So we would work all day and then do our workouts at night and then go tan. Literally, we'd have to go tan like every second or third day. And that would, and then when we were shooting, it would be, you know, same thing, get up at five, six, we'd have to get our workout in before we started shooting. Because once we had the makeup on and, and everything, it was harder to work out. And then we'd go through our rehearsals. Whenever we had a break, we'd, we'd run through the rehearsals, run through the fight sequences. So it was, it was pretty intense. That is crazy. And the diet too, you know, <laughs> you're on a big movie and you always look forward to the craft service table, right? On a big movie because it's always awesome and the catering is always great on these big movies. And we had like <laughs> little Dixie cups of three grapes and two little cubes of cheese. And they would stop production literally every th two and a half to three hours to get us a protein shake. So we were all on this together, which made it great, which made it easier because we had the whole team, like the whole stunt team, even the actors were all uh, on par. Like we were basically all doing the same thing, the same training, the same. The stunt guys had to do a bit more, but still, it was, uh, it was pretty intense, pretty awesome. That's incredible. I can't even imagine. Um, you also got to work on a few of the X-Men movies. How many X-Men movies have you been in? 
It's a good question. Uh, that, that's crazy that you've I, been I in. I think three. What did I do? I, man, I should have looked up my I'm stuff. Sure uh, X-Men 2. Mm -hmm. uh, then I did, yeah. Um, they, uh, which would have been, I think, X-Men like four or five. And then I was supposed to do the last one. Um, I was, they were doing reshoots for the, the, uh, this whole, uh, train sequence. Um, and they had called me, uh, to do it and basically, you know, it was a done deal, but then they got pushed for some reason and I started, I was starting power. So I couldn't, I couldn't do it, which would have been fun. So I would have been, th I think four movies, four X-Men movies I would have been in. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> Um, and you also worked on Deadpool 2. What was it, what's it like working on these enormous, huge blockbusters? It's great. Um, you know why it's great is they really take their time to get it right. Mm -hmm. um, so regardless, if there's a lot of uh, uh, rehearsals or uh, it's just on a bigger scope, man. It's, they, they just take more time. The sets are incredible usually. Like, as great as they are on television, a lot of television shows, they don't have the money to compete with, you know, like per episode. And a lot of TV shows are four or five million or whatever. Right. Um, and now all of a sudden you do you do this big feature where there's a hundred million dollars or two hundred million dollars. So they have the time and the money to spend in creating these incredible sets. So, yeah, like that set on the prison set on Deadpool 2 was amazing. Uh, so creative and, and big and huge. But, you know, they take time, and um, most of the actors are great. Ryan Reynolds was awesome, and working with him was, was, was a thrill for me because he's a Vancouver guy, and we'd never met before, so I thought it'd be great. And David Leach, who was the director, of, uh, was a fellow stunt guy that I had worked with a bunch of times. I don't know why my dad worked with... There we go. Ah. That I'd worked with a bunch of times before. He used to double Jean Claude Van Damme, and so he's another guy I fought. That was a that was a tough a tough fight. But um, <laughs> who else? Dolph Lundgren's another guy that was. He would have been a tough fight because he's an actual fighter. Like he he was an actual mm -hmm. kickboxer. Yeah. So tall. Yeah, yeah. He would have been tough, big, long reach, and, and stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, those big movies, man, they are, there's just everything on a bigger scale. So it's fun and they take your time and you run through, you make sure you get it right and everything. And it can be a little more intense, a little more uh, stressful, I would think, on, on big movies, but I love it. Yeah. That's cool. From there, I mean, many, many shows in between, but from there, you were the lead in an independent movie called uh, 2047 Virtual Revolution. And it looks similar to a Blade Runner type movie for those who haven't seen it, uh, but with dragons. And I saw the trailer and you look amazing. Um, again, like a, Aww, like a handsomer you. Bruce Willis. Um, and I think that you really carried that role well. Tell us about that film, Virtual Revolution, and the locations. Oh, the locations were so amazing. I was shooting in Paris. I mean, come on. Uh, and literally, we, we had, like, they couldn't close the Seine River. Um, I, we couldn't close it. But we'd have a skeleton crew of, of, and we'd go at 3, 4 in the morning and try to get these little sequences where I have to be alone. It was supposed to be this post-apocalyptic world where people aren't walking around much. And so we would take little snippets and we would wait, literally wait till everybody cleared out and then, okay, let's shoot it. Almost like guerrilla shooting in, in some ways. Um, but that was a wild thing. That was one of my favorite experiences doing a movie, uh, to be honest with you. Um, there's that, uh, Guy Roger Duvert is a um, French director, producer, creator of uh, Virtual Revolution. He wrote it. Um, and he had reached out to me on, on Facebook. See, it's sort of come full, full circle because he was a fan of Stargate. Oh, and, what? That's and he cool. was a, a fan of Stargate Universe. And when he's, he, he basically said, when I saw you on Stargate Universe, I had your vision, you know, had the idea of, of Nash, this character, was you. And um, 
so he reached out to me and, and again, it was an independent film. Uh, we ended up shooting it for not much money, but it was, it was one of those great, um, great experiences. And I'm really proud of the movie. We won a bunch of awards and, uh, yeah, I'm really proud of the movie. Our, our cinematographer Cyril was, was fantastic. Um, the cast was great. Everybody, you know, a lot of times with these independent films, here's the difference sometimes with bigger movies and, and such is that anybody that's there on an independent film is there because they love, they want to be there or they're trying to promote their careers, trying to take that other step up. And um, so that's what makes shooting independent films awesome because they're hard to shoot, but you know, you do the best you can uh, with what you got, but everybody works their butts off on these films. It's amazing. Everyone wants to see it. Oh yeah, and the locations in Paris. Uh, the Seine River was awesome. We had these big cathedrals that we were able, you know, these these big, huge, that were basically the mayor's office, but you know, it's in Paris. So obviously the buildings are phenomenal mm -hmm. and so much history and culture. And uh, so, yeah, I was just beyond thrilled. I mean, we shot a lot of nights, which always sucks when you, when, you know, four weeks of nights, but, uh, I loved it. I loved that experience. Yeah, one of my favorites. If you're jet lagged, maybe it's all right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true because we came in. I was a little jet lagged, so it worked out. The first couple of weeks like, were. Oh, this is perfect good. for my schedule right now. Yeah, it actually worked out really well. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, you did another movie with another Stargate alum, Cliff Simon. Can you talk about that film and where you shot that? Yeah, that like Cliff's great, by the way. Uh, really nice guy. Um, and again, sometimes you work on, on these Stargates and you don't meet a lot of the guys. And I don't do a ton of conventions. So um, so having, you know, meeting Cliff and hearing everybody else saying what a guy, a great guy he was. And he was amazing. Um, so we shot, the movie is called Project Eden. And we shot that in Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we shot that in um, uh, New Zealand. Was the major the major portion of it w was in New Zealand? So uh, and yeah, we shot some in, in uh, Minnesota and in New Zealand. So yeah, it was pretty pretty wild. One of the fans, Carrie from Australia, is asking: Is there going to be a volume two to Project Eden? I know they've talked about it, but I haven't heard yet. So uh, yeah, Carrie, I don't know. Um, but, you know, yeah, I'm open to it. I, I There was a script, um, and I read the script, and it's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I think it would be – well, there's a script. Uh, not really a script, more of a treatment type thing of what, what the character was – their journeys. But, yeah, definitely. I would love to do it. Uh, I think this is regarding your virtual revolution, the mayor office. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, 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 that's right. Yeah. Uh, nice. All right, you just came off a series regular role on Power, which is a TV series on stars. You played opposite rapper 50 Cent and actor Evan Handler, who I absolutely adored uh, from Californication. Tell us about that show and what it was like working with those actors. Um, yeah, that was, Power is one, again, um, so proud of that show. Um, it was great working with with these you know legends 50 cents a legend and he essentially our boss because he's one of the co-creators of it and and courtney kemp uh was the other creator and they were fantastic um and 50 was was a great guy to work with really cares about his actor um you know he's he's bigger than life and the fact that he was humble and and really respectful to us actors yeah, I can't ask for more. He was amazing. Um, and Courtney Camp, our showrunner, creator of the show, uh, it was amazing to work with. Gary Lennon was the other showrunner. Um, and they, you know, once my character started developing and they decided to bring him back as a series regular um, for the last season, uh, was was just an amazing experience because to see the, an incredible machine like Power work the way it did, uh, and they had money behind it, and it was really something uh, to be proud of and to want to work on. Um, the writing was fantastic. The the performances were great. The actors, Omari um, Hardwick and, and Joseph Sakura, are the guys that I worked with the most on the show. 
Mm-hmm. And most of my scenes were with them. And uh, so that was that was great. Guys that come to play every day that were totally uh, prepared um, and good. You know, uh, there's one thing when you work with other actors and, and, you know, I never really have problems with other actors not being prepared. But these guys were like full on. So you're like, OK, I've got to come to play every single day. I got to come ready. So, and they were great. That's so good. Um, I personally got to work with LL Cool J on NCIS Los Angeles, and I know when he's acting, he goes and he wants to go by Todd Smith. Like, oh, okay. Everyone calls him LL Cool J, um, and even on the call sheet, it says Todd Smith. So how did people call 50 Cent on set? Was it Fiddy, Mr. Cent, Curtis? You know, what does he go by? No, really, I'm just curious. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, I think most, some uh, some of the producers would call him Curtis. Uh, some guys, I would call him Curtis. Um, Fifth was, it was never Fiddy. It was never, uh, nobody never would Fiddy. say that. I think, I think the story behind that one is, it was Sharon Osbourne that, that coined that term. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, no, it was usually Curtis or Boss or. Um, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. He was, uh, but again, he was respectful, um, you know, to everyone. So he's great with the crew, with everybody. He's funny. He's really funny, too. Um, but yeah, that was it. And he directed uh, the third episode this year, which was a great one, which was a fun wow. one. So, yeah. That's cool. Man. Well, he. 50 Cent is, or 50 Cent rather, <laughs> is one of the most successful businessmen to come out of the rap game. And he could easily go into early retirement if he so desired. But having worked with him, what do you think drives him? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, what drives he's him? He's like a multi-millionaire for all of his uh, really smart business ventures. Look, everything, everything he touches turns to gold. Mm-hmm. So um, if there's anybody that I, I'd put money on would be 50 because he he's a really smart guy and, and knows what he wants. And, you know, he doesn't just want to do a TV show. He wants to do the best TV show he can. Um, he doesn't just want to do movies. He wants to create the best movie he can or the best action flick. Whatever he, he delves into, he's really good. And just with his music, same thing. He wants to make it the best it can be. Um, but he really strives for that. And, and he's also smart. He surrounds himself with really smart people to do things. Um, but, yeah, I mean, look, he's got hit shows all over now on Stars, on, on ABC. He's got For Life that's doing – it's kicking butt right now. Uh, and then they've got like five or six other uh, spinoffs, some spinoffs and other shows on Stars Network as well. So, um, yeah, he's uh, he's a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, he is. Well, that's incredible that you got that uh, experience. I'm just curious yeah. socially, if did you ever get to go party with, 50 cent did you find him in the club or anything uh that's a joke but uh did you have any funny stories that you uh can share uh funny stories with 50 no not really we didn't we didn't uh you didn't really go out or anything so busy no he was he was busy he he's got so much on the go so he he doesn't hang out we don't go party um now the guys that did hang out with uh, uh, Joseph Sakura, um, Shane Johnson, who plays Sax Cooper on the show, and and Joe Perino. Uh, those are guys that I'd hang out with a lot and and have drinks with. And those guys are amazing. Just these are friends for life now, which is what's. Uh, sometimes you do a series, and you're fortunate to be able to spend time with some great people. And off camera, these guys are amazing. On camera, they're great. So yeah, these guys are friends for life. Yeah. I'm glad. It makes all the difference when people are great. Oh my God. Yeah. It's because it's a hard business. There could be a lot of pressure. There's a lot of stress people get. And, and, you know, um, and I just try to avoid all the drama and just come in and do my work. And if I can, it's great. You know, sometimes you can't avoid drama if people have a problem with you, but uh, for the most part, I'm okay. It seems to be going okay. So, (laughs) and luckily with power, um, there's no drama with me, nothing that I really heard. So I just had a blast on the show. Yeah. 
Okay, semi-spoiler alert for those who haven't seen it. Uh, your character in power comes to an end. So how much heads up did you have as an actor that that was going to happen? And how did you personally feel about that? Well, here's the thing I've learned over my career is when you play quote unquote bad guy, <laughs> um, there's always a moment that you're, you know, there's going to be your demise is going to come, right? There's always a time where you got to have the heroes have to be the heroes, right? And they, you know, and there's times where I make it last a little longer, where originally is only supposed to be, I believe with power is only supposed to be originally like two or three episodes. I was very lucky there that I was able to make it last a little wow, longer. Wow, what? Oh, uh, wow, you charmed the pants off those guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, and so that was great. Um, but I knew it was going to happen, but it still stung when it hurt when it happened because I was having such a great time on the show and being in New York was such a, an amazing place uh, to be, to shoot. It, New York itself is the character, right? So shooting these scenes in Brooklyn and New York and, and Manhattan and, and Queens, and it's just amazing. Staten Island, we everywhere we went, a lot of stuff, but still we, we got to see, you know, the city. And, and if you watch the show, you'll see that New York is part of, is one of the characters, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it was it was sad, and I, they gave me, I would say, a good month notice, um, and I wasn't allowed to tell anybody because they wanted. So a lot of people just found out in the table read and stuff. So that was uh, so that was a bit, you know. Afterwards, like, yo, oh, man, I didn't know, you know. So in, in that regard, it was a bit tough, and it was sad because I was having such a great time on the show. But uh, yeah, and even being in New York me. too, because I'd imagine you must have been there for a long time. Yeah, six months. Wow. Yeah, and I would come back and forth to see my family, and they came to visit me as well, obviously. But yeah, it was like six months. But it was great. Like again, uh, nothing bad to say. They respectfully called me, saying this is why your character's ending because yeah. uh, of certain circumstances. I don't want to spoil it for other people that haven't watched it. So I was like, no, that makes sense to me. He's great. Thanks for having me. And uh, you know, at first you're like, oh, I want to know, is it? Anything I did wrong? Did I do anything wrong? Yeah. Uh, whenever you die, or you sort of get you have that in the back of your mind. But they, you know, more than made me feel welcome. They invited me to all the the after show stuff. They invited me to all the premieres. So in that regard, I figured, okay, they they respected my work, um, and they did. They told me that. So again, uh, Courtney and Gary, uh, Courtney Kemp and Gary Lennon were so amazing, uh, talking to me about this and talking me through it and explaining to me why, which was great. It doesn't always happen that way. Well, congratulations. That's, oh, thank you. That's a pretty uh, incredible role that you had. So you worked on the X-Files, and I don't think you had much or any dialogue in that role, but your character almost killed Gillian, uh, Gillian Anderson. Uh, what was it like working on such an iconic show? Oh, that was amazing. Look, um, one of my first gigs ever was was on a, on a X Men where I played an orderly and I think I said like they upgraded me uh, from uh, I think they upgraded me from background and I had to pick up David Duchovny and just say one two three <laughs> and, um, and but you know what was awesome about that was that they uh, the whole you know, sound speed rolling right all that stuff was like oh that was the only time in my life that. I felt similar to like to playing sports was that adrenaline rush that you get a little bit the anxiety that little, the butterflies you get before they say action. Yeah. You know, I'm like, Oh my God, I have to do this. I, I have to, that was the one, that was the part that solidified, solidified it in my mind that I was going to be an actor like full on. Really? That's so cool. <laughs> and uh, that came about in a, in a weird way where um, that part on, on X-Men that I just did or a couple years ago, uh, where the stunt coordinator had talked to me about it and if I'd be interested in playing this killer on, on the show. But he said, it's weird because there's no dialogue. You don't say anything. You mean X-Files? X-Files, yeah. What, what did I say? X-Men. Oh, yeah. few too many in the head, you see? <laughs> <laughs> you see what happened? Um, so uh, on, on X-Files, and, uh, and Chris Carter had asked if I'd be interested in doing it. And, and of course, I, I wanted to work with him. Wow. And he was wow. directing Chris it. Carter calls. I mean, 
And so, uh, yeah, it was, and Melissa Stubbs, our, our coordinator, were like, you know, Chris really wants you. And uh, so I went down, met, spoke with them, and they said it's going to be a lot of days, a lot of action, a lot of driving stuff, a lot of cool things. And so it was good to see David Duchovny. Again, I'd met him a few times uh, post that, my first episode that I did, how many years ago was that? 20 years ago. Um, and then uh, we'd met at different events and uh, and then we talked and it was fun. It was a good time to work with him again. And Jillian was was fine. Um, I didn't know her at all. And she was going, you know, I had to choke her out basically and stuff. So, uh, but she was a pro, she was good. <laughs> so you basically meet her and then just. Uh... Pretty much, hi, how you doing? Nice. I'm Mike, I'm gonna be choking you. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> okay, nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you had six episodes recurring on Arrow. Can you tell us about your character on Arrow and what it was like working on that show? Oh, Arrow was was uh, was a cool show. Again, it was a it's a pretty big show in, in Vancouver. As far as mm -hmm. working a lot, you know, a lot of people I knew a lot of people on the set, which is always great working in Vancouver because you tend to know uh, everybody. And uh, you know, it's again playing this um, Russian godfather called Victor. And that was fun. And they kept throwing more Russian dialogue as we went. Uh, not that I speak Russian, but I, you know, there, was time, there was times where you don't have much time to prep it because the rewrites would come in and you just got to go. But they, we had a, um, we had a dialogue coaches on set, which was great. And uh, yeah, they seemed to like it. So, But it was fun working. Stephen Amell was fun to work with. Uh, you know, he's a professional. He's so busy on that show. And David Nichol, yeah. had a blast working with David Nichol. Uh, he's another ex-Stargate uh, um, person who I had never worked with before, and then I ended up working with him on Arrow. And David Nichol was awesome. He, we've, uh, we've become friends. We hang out now every once in a while. We go for a beer and a taco when we can. Really? <laughs> That's cool. You did a film called Skin Trade. Tell us about that and your connection to Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman, another amazing guy, amazing actor. Uh, he played my dad uh, on Skin Trade. Can I just say that I want that to be your T-shirt? That <laughs> Ron you Perlman say played my dad. Played my dad. <laughs> That's so cool! Oh my God! You, you know what? I gotta have to do that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get that T-shirt. <laughs> I don't know if he I likes just, that so much, but uh, but no, he, I just love that. yeah that the Ron Perlman played your dad. Yeah, that's okay. Played my pops, uh, yeah, and um, and that was shot in Thailand with uh, Dolph Lundgren, and uh, and that was that was another amazing look. I, I travel all over the world to shoot these movies, and I got to work in Thailand in Bangkok. Uh, and uh, it was hot, it was dirty, steamy, people were great. Um, did a little That's bit of sightseeing, not so much because I was working. And oh, the worst part was I was doing Continuum, I was finishing Continuum. Mm -hmm. And then they, the scheduling got changed while so I was in Thailand. It literally was, uh, I went to Thailand to shoot one scene because of the location specific. So I flew to Thailand, shot the one scene, was there for a day and a half, had to fly back to finish Continuum. That so no. another four days, and then I had to fly right back to Thailand to start. So that was that was exhausted. I remember that. That is a lot of sitting on a plane. Yeah, yeah. Woo. But again, it's a it's a good problem to have, right? You're working on on two projects, which doesn't always uh, happen. Yeah. Wow. Tell us about working on Battlestar Galactica. I know you did a lot of green screen work on Blood and Chrome. Yes. What's that like as an actor? Uh, it's a challenge at times, you know, um, just to make sure. As far as I remember one time, uh, one of the scenes, I was talking about my, uh, my Viper, uh, and I had to put my hand, but... It was green screen, so they had the ladder of me stepping onto this Viper plane, but the, the plane wasn't there. There was nothing there. So I'd have to put, they wanted me to lean my hand on it. Uh-huh. And, but I couldn't lean too much because my hand would go right through on the green screen. So we'd have to rewatch it a couple times to see where 
and I'd have to, okay, is this, is this good enough? Is it right here? Is that okay? Oh, that's too close. Okay. There, you know, that kind of thing. So in those regard, that's where it gets challenging. Uh, yeah. Because there's nothing there. Right. And that's, that's the one thing green screen, even on 300, we had a lot of the, the green screen. I mean, we had our fight scenes in that, but a lot of it was all green screen. So um, you're like, I don't know how good, I hope this looks good. Cause you don't know. Right. Yeah. Cause 300, you were filming in Canada, right? In Montreal studios, yeah. all studio. That was pretty much all studio work. Yeah. Wow. Um, you and I, I was very fortunate to be able to attend as a guest a convention with you. You oh, and I had a blast at GateCon, the Stargate sci-fi convention in Vancouver. Uh, what was yeah. it like for you attending your very first convention? Uh, it was it's surreal, right? It, because I had no idea. And again, um, with the Stargate characters, not very fortunate. I worked on these shows, but um, I didn't <laughs> I have look at this that. photo oh because this, I loved this moment where we uh, staged this with uh, you and I and Sharon Taylor and Apophis. Yeah, that's right, Apophis. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. That's a hilarious and photo. I love it. That's the head that you've worn. I guess. I've worn, yeah. That is so crazy. Um, you know, doing these conventions, it's tough, right? Because I didn't know what to expect. You know, uh, I didn't know how people would react to me or how they would treat me. But um, and it, it takes a lot of energy out to meet all these people and to shake hands and to say hello and to sign autographs. Uh, but I had a blast. Yeah, that was that was that was a fun experience for me. I was in Atlanta. I did did one in Vancouver and then one in Atlanta. It was sort of around the same time, and so that was uh, that was interesting. Do you have any memorable convention moments that were either funny or heartwarming or surprising? Well, yeah, there was. Um, I, I know one convention. I was. Uh, I was at the one actually the one in Atlanta, and and I'm amazed, you know, because this costs money to get autographs and to to come do these things, right? And uh, not everybody has a lot of money. But I remember a heartwarming thing is I was talking to one of the fans and I was actually having a drink and he came and he asked if he could sit beside me. I said, absolutely. And we, we had a drink and I asked him, so why do you come to these conventions? So what, what makes you want to come to these conventions? And he said, well, he said, it's my vacation. I said, wouldn't you rather go on a vacation or do something else with the money? You know? And he's like, well, this is, this is what I want to do. He goes, you guys help. He goes, watching sci-fi shows and help me escape what I do every day is, you know, I have a nine to five job, you know, he was, it wasn't his dream job, but he was like, but when I come home at night and I'm able to watch a show, it's an escape for me and to watch characters I respect and, and talented actors um, and to have a chance to meet them is a thrill for me. So I was like, well, that's amazing. You know, to actually talk to someone and find out why do you come to conventions? What, what made you, what made you want to spend money to come and see this convention. So that was really heartwarming. Uh, he was really thrilled to be there. And um, so that was fun. That was one of those moments. I'm like, okay, this is why we do it. Absolutely. And it's that's, that's why you do it. So Carrie says, you must come back to Australia and do Oz comic con, Mike. I'll do it. Tell him to call me. <laughs> yeah. I'll go. I know it helps if the fans let the um, conventions know that they want to see us. Yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it's um, and again, it was just I just don't do a lot of conventions at the time was because of my kids too. I didn't want to be away from my family too much. Uh, but now I've, I'm going to start. You know, once thing I was I had a couple conventions that were just canceled because of what we're going through with COVID. But um, hopefully we'll have some more. Oh, look at that! Yeah, there we are with Jodell Furland from yeah. Dark Matter. Jodell's awesome. He's so great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sweetheart. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to doing that um, convention again when things are up and going. Yeah, I, um, I mean, who knows, right? I guess <laughs> who knows when the next round of conventions are going to happen. So, ah, <laughs> there's there we are. Here we are. Yeah, yeah. that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, a blast too, right? Seeing all the other actors and, and uh, your friends, you know, like 
that Vancouver convention was, it seemed like we knew everybody, <laughs> everybody that was there. Right. So that was really mm -hmm. fun. It is fun to kind of get to know the actors as well as the fans. You had a recurring in the TV series, The 100. Can you tell us about that role? And this picture I'm gonna pull up. Oh wait, I don't know why, but the picture that I have is a bit of a meme, which is kind of funny. Someone memed you. I'm generally a pleasant person. <laughs> That was Vincent. Man, that was uh, such a cool character to play because um, they pretty much, you know, how do I say it? They pretty much gave me carte blanche uh, with this character. They basically mm -hmm. said, "Here, here's our idea. Now, and I remember talking to our, our, our director and Jason, they said, okay, so you guys will tell me if it's too much, if it's not enough, whatever, let's... It was a little scary because I didn't know how they would react to this character. Um, but they see, you know, basically people were like, just leave me be and, and let me do my thing. I mean, he's a cannibal, right? So how do you make a very Hannibal Lecterish as well, right? So how do you make this guy um, somewhat likable or at least, you know, fight for him to, to some uh, regard? So that was a real challenge for me. And that was what was fun about working on, on The 100. Um, was trying to come up with this character and making Vincent this this evil man, but try to make people like him, uh, or at least like to watch him. And so it was really challenging. It was it was a little stressful at the beginning, but I think I think we got it. I think we got something uh, that resonated with people. Yeah, well, that's great. You uh, were in a show called Mistresses, and I know that Alyssa Milano was in it. Did you have any love scenes in that show? I did, which is, uh, yes, you did. yeah, which was, which was, uh, my wife loves that by the way. Um, <laughs> um, but no, look, uh, mistresses was a blast to play. Uh, I played the boss, uh, of this, this real estate agency and I was, um, a character from France and he came in and, uh, he ends up having an affair with, uh, Jess McCallum's character called Joss and, uh, so that was one season. That was another one of those shows where, you know, I was supposed to do one or two episodes and then it turned into more. So, um, but that was fun too, to be able to play a totally different character than what uh, I'm used to playing, you know, not this killer on some spaceship or, or something <laughs> like that. Just normal life, ABC, you know, TV. And, um, but that was a great experience, Mistresses, yeah. Wow. That's wild. And, and always, when you, you know, were home, did your wife be like, you better hit the shower right now? <laughs> I know, she was cool. You know what, I between, with Ange, I always tell her, you know, here's a script, this is what's gonna happen. As long as she knows, she doesn't wanna see something and all of a sudden like, why didn't you tell me about that? Like, ah, yeah. 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 Um, and because, you know, it's not an e easy thing and you're, you're there with beautiful women, right? But, you know, we have, uh, um, we have a great connection, Angela and I. So, you know, for us, it's we just, as long as we talk about everything like that, she's okay with it. You guys have been together for a long time. We know. Married 20 years this summer. Yay, congratulations. That's so great. Yep. Okay, so yeah. you typically play badass action guys, but you worked on a Hallmark show, <laughs> Peter Cove. So who was that with, and was that a nice change of pace for you? Yeah, Cedar Cove was was um, was fun because it was a hallmark again, a, another change of pace. Although this guy was retired, a SWAT team commander leader, so he was oh, sort of a yeah. So there's still some of that. But ironically enough, I remember Martin Wood uh, directed and and he said, so "Listen, you know, they all know." You playing as characters and you know some evil characters and some so he's like you know we got to just keep him light right we keep him i said well i'm an actor Martin. i think we can come up with something so that was funny and uh you know so it was great working with him and andy makita who was another you know stargate person and and martin wood another stargate that ended up doing a lot of these hallmarks That's so great. yeah but it's a nice change of pace it's a it's it's um they're, I call them feel good shows and feel good series, right? That, yeah. That's what it's about. It, it's about watching something like that that makes you feel good. Uh, they're entertaining, they're fun to watch. Do you prefer working in TV or movies? Uh, 10 years ago, I would have said easily movies. Um, 
features would you know I love I still do I still it's one one a and one b I would say uh, because I, I'm series work right now like with, with power with with some of the other series I've done with cable um, television is so good right now I, I think television is amazing so um, oh so hi Donnie yeah I'd love to be on SWAT CBS is SWAT too that I've actually had a few meetings for that show so I'd love to do that one. Oh, you never know might never be on know. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I think the steady work of a series uh, on a creative show like like a Power Dark Matter or something like that, where I had a blast working on, I would or Stargates, um, that would be the ultimate. Yeah, movies still. I say that, and then when I do, like when I did Deadpool two, I was like, oh, okay, I'd love to be, you know, uh, I'd love to do a major lead and a major motion picture would probably still be my my big dream. So if a new Stargate series came back, would you would you be up to to come back? Absolutely, yeah. You heard it. <laughs> yeah. I feel the same way. Who was your favorite director to work with and why? And I'm also curious what kind of are some of your favorite qualities that mark a good director? Um Oh, again, I can't say my favorite because one. It's like, it's one like saying, saves. it's like saying, um, okay, I'll, I'll start with this. I, I love directors uh, that trust their actors. Yeah, so I, I need a director that 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 trusts me that that will let me do things, and then we come to an agreement. It's discussed. I like that. I don't, you don't need to be. Uh, I don't like. Guys that yellers and screamers and that kind of thing, uh, which I've worked with, which I, to me, you don't need that. Um, and I think that's going by the wayside. A lot of those crazy directors, you know, earlier on in my career. Mm -hmm. um, but I love guys that are are, are are creative and want to hear what I have to say. I don't like directors that already have something in planned in mind. I understand if time's short, but if we got to do something, I, you know, come to me, let me do my thing and then let's massage it and figure out where it needs to go. Right. Uh, man, Andy McKee, I've worked with a ton, a ton on a bunch of different shows. He's one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, he's directed me too. He's, he's great. Yeah. Uh, Peter Delis again, he goes, he shoots fast. He goes, but he trusts his actors. He trusts his actors to do their thing. Uh, TJ Scott is a good friend of mine as well. And I love working with TJ. He's really fun to work with. Um, Let's see. There's so many guys. Gary Lennon directed me on 50 was great. He was uh, really cool to work with. Um, Slick, uh, Slick Name, who's uh, directed me on a little Netflix thing called It's Bruno and on Power. He's another one. He's really into the creative process and into directors, uh, into their actors doing what they want, you know, bring it. And he, he likes to see you stretch, which is great as an actor. Yeah, there's so many good ones. Who is one of your favorite actors ever to work with? And have you ever had a fanboy moment working with anyone on set? I had a fanboy moment with Dolph Lundgren. Yes. In the in the audition room. Um really? He was in yeah. the audition room. He was in the room and he said, he's looking at me, and I was like, he goes, you know what? I want to read opposite. So he ends up reading. So I was just like thrown for a loop. I'm like, I'm auditioning with Dolph Lundgren, one of the guys that, um, yeah. you know, I loved all those movies. Like I said, right. The, the Dolph Lundgren, the Jean-Claude Van Damme's, uh, Sylvester Stallone, all these guys, right. The action movies that I love to watch, uh, and to get to work with these guys. And then, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger was another one that I was like, this is kind of cool. You know, I get to work with Arnold. Um, oh, you've worked with all of the greats. I know. And you uh, were one of the greats. Oh, thank you. No, it was. You know who else was fantastic to work with was uh, Hugh Jackman. Um, yes, very nice man. Such a cool guy, and, and really smart, and and good, and uh, respectful. I really enjoyed working with him. And again, he's another. He's iconic Wolverine, right? And yeah. uh, to work with him, Michael Keaton. I had. I remember doing a movie called White Noise uh, with uh -huh. Michael Keaton. And we had to, it was a low budget thing that ended up becoming a, a pretty good movie. Um, but at the time it was really low budget. It was, we had no idea. So we lost the location and then the dialogue had to change. 
And so, we, you know, we had to sit down. I'm looking at Michael Keaton as he's looking at me doing a scene. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, literally when I'm doing a freaking scene with, with Michael Keaton. Like, this is this is so amazing. And and really, I'm totally out of the scene now. So then we had to talk about it <laughs> and go through everything. So I think that was probably one of the times where I had a bit of a fanboy moment where I'm like, oh, my God, this is cool. But I love and, him in Beetlejuice. I'm like well, the biggest Beetlejuice fan. I just, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, his eyes are so expressive, you know, uh, when, mm -hmm. when you're working with him. He says yeah. so with his eyes that you're like, oh, my God, this guy's really good. Like, he's, he's that good. And I remember doing it, and then we're creating the scene, and we're going through stuff. And then the producer he goes, look at you working with Michael Keaton. And then I'm like, why did you have to say that? Because <laughs> yeah. now, now I'm like, oh, shit, the pressure's on. Uh, but it, it ended up going well, so. Yeah, they say be like Mike. He's met all the cool people. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm really lucky. I I agree. Um, oh, and they say I'm not supposed to say the the B word again, because then oh. he'll appear. <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny. So uh, we have a question from the audience. Has Mike Dopud ever played around with voice acting for animated series, video games, and so forth? His voice would be great for it. I agree. You have a great voice. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I have done some stuff. And that's another, uh, I guess, area I'd like to get into a little more of. Um, it, it, but I don't know. I think you you know this as well. It's kind of a close-knit community, that voice uh, genre. So they're, they, Do they just say that because they don't want us? Want people, yeah. They just want all the work? That's what <laughs> exactly. I think. They're like, oh, no, it's it's. there's no more room. Yeah, no more room. It's not. So I've done a few things. Um, there was an old uh, series called Beastmaster that I used to revoice a lot of. I've done some video things. Um, I've done a few, you know, a lot of motion capture work with like EA Sports and that kind of thing back in the day. Um, but yeah, definitely um, it's, it's somewhere I'd like to do some more uh, to delve into a little more. It is pretty cool. And your kids must love it too. I don't yeah. know if they're gamers. Uh, my son is, and oh, oh, that brings me up to, I, th I saw it before, but I can't remember who, who mentioned it. Um, it's uh, uh, Halo 4, Forward Unto Dawn. Um, that was cool to play General Black. I, I got to play General Black in that. And my son was too young at the time, but like the following year, he got into video games. And, and that was, Halo was one of his favorites. So that was cool for him to be able to see that and to see me in the movie, you know. Uh, Super braggable at school. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh and it was funny because we didn't let him play video games. Yeah, we didn't let him play video games. Um but he uh but finally, you know, he's like, Dad, all my buddies are saying, you know, you're in the Halo and I can't play video, you know, so finally they're like, Okay, 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 you can play video games. <laughs> That's so great. Um oh yes. What has been the highlight of your career? Meaning, what show are you also most proud of? That's the hardest question for you because you've just worked on everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> In the most wonderful way. Are, are you believe my, look, uh, the Stargate franchise, mm -hmm. uh, this specifically SGU for me, um, Nice. And uh, Power. I'd love to work with those people uh, uh, again. I mean, there's so many. Uh, I'm so lucky I work with. But I did this one uh, Canadian uh, miniseries called Canada, Russia 72. Um, the Summit Series, which was uh, another one of those amazing, amazing uh, projects where it was a bunch of Canadians. You know, we're all hockey fans. And we got to portray the the most iconic hockey moment in Canada, you know, in, in was that 72 series when Canada almost lost to Russia. And the first time that was the first time the NHLers played like uh, in, in the like for a team Canada before it was always amateur players and the Russians would have their pros. And then the pro, the Russians thought that they could beat the NHLers. So the NHLers, they, they came up with the summit series. It was called. And Paul Henderson scored the game-winning goal and a lot. So that was an iconic moment in Canadian sports history. So to be able to play, uh, so I played Vic Hadfield in it. To play an iconic character like that of something that happened, it's it's 
Amazing. Um, so that was one of the most fun projects and, and really cool projects I was proud of. Virtual Revolution is another one. Oh, uh, that was we, amazing. We, we brought this little independent film and, and we came up with something that we can be proud of. Um, and, you know, shooting in Paris was fantastic. Oh, dream. What a dream. Who do you look up to actor wise? Hmm. Who do I look up to? Uh, one person that I, I'll try to watch whatever they do is Meryl Streep. Um, she's a treasure. She's amazing in, in so many things. Uh, I always bring it back to like Bridges in Madison County, you know, when I see her doing her, how she embodies a character completely. Um, there's Anthony Hopkins. Um, Oh yes. Uh, you know Mel Gibson. I like his. I like what he does. I know you know he had some bad press for years or whatever. But I'm talking strictly on as far as um, as actors go. He's fantastic. Anthony Hopkins is great. Uh, I like watching Daniel Craig. Um, yes. I think he pulls off the ball. Of him, I think he's great. Uh, there's so many good actors. Uh, Tom Hardy's another actor I worked with that I really like. I love him. I just wish he'd show his mouth more. <laughs> <laughs> he's always just like, Burr. right, right. Uh, but he's good. Uh, so many good ones. Um, yeah, who do I love to watch? Uh, yeah, those are those are probably the main ones. And then there's, you know, I always love great performances. So uh, Daniel Day Lewis is great to watch. Uh, <laughs> He really commits to his characters. Um, Denzel Washington's always, you know, training day is like, wow, you know, that was watching him play. I know there's other shows that he's done, but that was another one where I watched him like, this guy's amazing, you know. Um, oh, why am I drawing a blank to it? Not, not picket fences. Uh, he just did, uh, he did a play for, you know, I'm just drawing a blank on it. Anyways, that was, he was amazing in that. Um, that they turned it into a movie, so. <laughs> what would you like your legacy to be? Um, oh, Simone, that's a crazy question. I don't know. Uh, like, my legacy. I'm um, blushing. I'm blushing. <laughs> I, you know what, just uh, that, that people like my characters and um, that it resonated with them and they know, and hopefully, you know, to hear that I'm not a, you know, that I'm a stand up guy that, that does his best at with what he, you know, uh, there I go again with the screen. Yeah. Um, just someone that, that well, works hard. That, that just, says you're not done yet, LOL. And yeah. that's <laughs> no, not yet. I hope not. I need to get back to work. I'm missing working. It's like, what a question to pull out of left field. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's great. Um, <laughs> but yeah, look, just somebody that worked hard, that, that loved coming to work. And um, yeah. I know that about you personally. You are incredibly professional, very, very good at your job, and you really care. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I do. I, I, I do. I care about my actors. I care about. So once, once in a blue moon, you get someone that doesn't give a shit. You're like, you're like, well, how can you? How can you not yeah. give a shit? Get out of here. You know, like, who are you? You know, when people are 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 not happy with their work or when they complain about, you know, uh, not making enough money, I'm like, listen, you're working as an actor. You're doing fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody would love to work, of course, but. You know, anybody that complains about stupid stuff, I have no no <laughs> no place for them. So you filmed in Canada, in the US, in Thailand, New Zealand, Paris, and I can't even remember what else. Where is your favorite place to film in the world so far? Well, okay, I'll, I'll break it down this way. Um, Icon iconic moments, moments in my life that that were surreal in the fact that I can't believe I'm actually doing this, being an actor, right? Uh, where you dream about being an actor and being able to uh, to do, to work, right? It is, I was doing Mistresses and I was on Sunset Boulevard, yeah. driving a DeLorean 
coming. So I had, the, and then I was playing this suave uh, real estate broker with, you know, beautiful girl on my arm and walking out and having, there's like 300 background people there. And, and you know, it was a pretty, pretty big moment in this episode. And I'm like, I just look at, I'm like, I'm on Sunset Boulevard driving a DeLorean and having all these people almost like a play. I was like, Oh my God, this is what did you dream of? Right. As a, as, as wanting to be an actor, you dream of these iconic moments in these films that, you know, or TV shows. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, New York was the other one. I mean, in being in Manhattan, walking to set, walking down the streets, you know, and you're like, Oh my God, I'm in New York. I'm shooting one of the leads in, in in New York shooting on a show, which is, you know, all those New York movies that were based out of New York, there's movies that were based on New York. You're just like, oh, that, that, that was another one. And, and I think Paris, you know, that sequence on the center of doing virtual revolution, I was just amazed that I'm like, oh my God, I'm actually here in Paris, you know, uh, doing a movie. It's, Oh, that was I those go moments there. that yeah, those are moments that that are uh, that are fantastic. One of the fans says, "Come here to Versailles." <laughs> j'arrive, j'arrive. <laughs> That's so great. Okay, my other question to follow up on that is, where is your favorite place in the world to travel to? Um. That's a good one. Uh, I would like to bring my family back to Australia uh, again because I didn't get a chance to really see it as much as I would have liked. Um, also, Europe. I want to do Europe with my family. And Where um, in Europe do you want to go? I, I'd like to hit uh, Paris, London, and uh, I think I'd like to places in Spain. I've been to Spain. I shot a little thing in Spain too. And um, we love, I love Barbados in the Caribbean. Oh, I've never been. So we've been, our family's been, that's one of my favorite places to go. Cool. Where? New Zealand was really cool too. God. Yeah, yeah, there's so many places. This world is amazing. What advice would you give to young actors? Don't become an actor if, if it's not uh, a passion for you. If it's because you go through so many bad things, hopefully you don't. And, and if you're a young actor and you get lucky, you you, know, you work hard to get this amazing gig. Um, but really at the end of the day, uh, I think you've got to have passion for it. And because this industry beats you up and, and you got to do your work. Do your work. Don't be lazy. Don't be a lazy actor. Do your work. And trust, trust, the, trust the journey. You know, um, it sucks at times, but, it, you know, when you do get that part, even that little part or whatever it is, when you do get on set and you do do it, it just makes it all the, the more worthwhile. You're like, oh, my God, this is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. What is a role that you would like to play, but you haven't yet? Ooh. I'd I'd love to do more comedy, if if yes. I, could. I I don't do much and and um you know you sort of it's not that I'm typecast but you sort of you get hired for what people know you as you know for the most part so I would love to try that it scares me because I see stand up comedians and I have friends that are you know like Russell Peters Jerry D all these guys that I, I know that, that what was is this from speaking of you doing uh, that's from that uh it's bruno it's a uh, slick um <laughs> name produced and directed it so i i play uh baby that's my name <laughs> your name is baby yeah and i just got out of prison in that in the in that shot so um <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that I mean, that's a comedy too. That that was fun to play. I would love to do more comedy, and and it scares me, obviously, but it would do. Have you ever tried stand up? No, no, it petrifies me. Have you ever considered um, even taking like a course or something? I've to do done. I've done a course. I've done some courses, and it was super challenging and it made me realize how hard it was so you know every once in a while i'm like okay you know i know my limits i know i think i could i could do some things in comedy 
but I don't think uh, a stand-up comic would be too hard. I don't. Mm. Well, man, I have so much respect for comedians. Um, it's such a tough gig, man. Yeah. Getting up there. I remember doing this one thing, and it was the first, literally the first minute in class, and the the teacher. It was a sitcom class and a comedy class, just to get a to get that feeling. And all of a sudden, they were like, "Okay." Uh, Stand up in front. Okay, so I go stand up, and uh, then they were like, "Okay, so now you have to stand up there till you make us laugh." I'm like, "What?" So what, what do I do? What do I do? I don't know. Make a joke, whatever. And it's like, so then they're all in a circle around you, and you have to do it. And I was like, "Oh my god!" I got nervous. I couldn't. I was sweating. I couldn't think of anything. And eventually, I can't remember. I said some some silly joke where I think they were. I don't know if they. Were, it was. It was just funny though, where they finally all laughed, and I was like, "Oh, what a relief!" Right? That was that was brutal. Um, but then doing the class and realizing, oh, okay, I've got timing for this. I understand this. I understand that. So it would be hard to do. I, yeah, I don't know if I say never, but yeah, it's not something I'm like. I'll leave that to pros. Initial Daz says Mike would be perfect in "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia" or "Trailer Park Boys." Oh, that, that would be fun. Yeah, I would definitely be into that. That's fun. Yeah, we need to do more comedy. Yeah. What, what shows are you watching right now? We, uh, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Oh, cool. They're amazing, amazing. It's like watching a play almost. Um, Angela and I were talking about that. It was like, this is what we watch. And it's like watching a play. But it, the the dialogue, the writing is so witty, so smart, so fast paced. It's it's amazing. They do such a great job. Um, look, I watched Ozark. Uh, Ozark. I'm a big fan of Ozark. <laughs> Finished that I think last month or three weeks ago or whatever. Uh, what else? What is it? Tiger King. We watched. Uh, I loved it. Strange. Yeah, I, I did too. I couldn't wait to watch the whole thing. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe this is actually happening. <laughs> um, what else? Um, and you heard that they're casting um, Nicolas Cage as, as yeah. Joe Exotic? Totally was it wouldn't be my first pick, but you never, you know, I don't doubt he's a great it'll actor too. So to it'll be well, it'll be interesting to see what he brings. Yeah. Yeah. What else did we? Oh, I'm watching uh, the Last Dance, uh, the Michael Jordan uh, documentary, which is which is great. And I was a fan of the Bulls, so um, yeah. That's that's been really interesting to watch. A guy at the top Is that of the game. Series, then? Yeah, it's on Netflix. It's uh, it's called The Last Dance. It's Michael. It's about. It's essentially about Michael Jordan's last championship season. But they delve back into the beginning of his career and how, you know, he came from a guy getting cut from his basketball team to becoming the greatest, arguably the greatest athlete ever. So, it's really interesting. Speaking of interesting. Tell us something interesting about you that nobody knows. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow, I don't know. Um, I mean, people don't know, but I'm a, I'm a big family guy, uh, family man. So, um, you know, my kids, my family, uh, people don't know, get yeah, people around here. But I coach, I coach their hockey and I coach their, you know, their sports uh, as much as I can. Um, man, what, what else? Uh, see, not a lot of people knew I played hockey as well. So that was, an, uh, that's was something different. Yeah. I, I should have thought of something. I, didn't, I don't know. I just, I'm just curious. Yeah. I don't know. If you have any funny, you know, silly human tricks or. Or I, well, I do have one. Or I've had a lot of surgeries and stuff, so my knee does a, a weird thing. Uh, <laughs> so when I show people that, they they're always grossed out by it. It's so that yeah, that's the that's one thing. And I've done that. Okay, there you go. I did that on a it was on a movie called Rollerball. Yeah. And um and we're you know training hard, doing these rehearsals, and you know our stunt coordinator said, "Listen, don't go crazy now. Don't get hurt." Right. I said, okay. So we did this drill and we were all tired. And uh, so then I just, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to trick them with my knee, with my trick knee. I'm going to show them. <laughs> so all of a sudden I just land funny and I go, ow, ow. And everybody's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? I go, I don't know. I, oh, my knee, my knee hurts. My knee hurts. And then I, it comes out of the socket a bit. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I pull it out, it does this. Ah. 
So I did that and to the, like the, the coordinator, our director and everybody, and everybody just about like big cringe. I'm like, oh no. And I said, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Because that was too real, that was too real. We thought you literally blew your knee out again. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, no. So that was one of the those stupid trick I did sometimes, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, because everybody was getting stressed. That's what happened. And I wanted to break that tension. But I broke it too much. Everybody was just like grossed out. Like, no, how can you walk with that knee? But, but I can. We have a question from the chat. Who's a better hockey player, Richard Dean Anderson or Mike? Oh, I love RDA, but Mike, me. Yeah. I would put my money on you as well. Yeah, I've played with him, and, and yeah, he. I'll, I'll go with me. <laughs> All right, we're nearing the last three questions. Uh, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Um, still hopefully doing, uh, you know, on a series or, or doing some movie work and, uh, you know, uh, being with my family, obviously. But, yeah, being – Doing some great series, yeah. yeah. Still doing. I, I, I predict you will be doing both and lots of both. Yeah. 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 What can we look out for? Uh, do you have any projects coming out soon? Any conventions no. down the road? Uh, well, <laughs> I was supposed to do a Calma convention. Um, yeah. But that got obviously with with COVID, we can't do that. So I'm assuming they're going to come up with another uh, another one of those. Um, I'm just looking at a new convention uh, people. So um, thinking about that, uh, films right now, nothing because everything was um, sort of shut down. I was I'm working on some other projects, trying to come up with my own projects. So uh, that's what I've been focusing on. Trying to in what way, like writing or producing? Yeah, writing ideas, coming up with ideas. Yeah, I want to start doing some of my own stuff. So, and do you ever want to direct as well, or have you directed? I I haven't directed. Uh, oh, there's something. Something Carrie just said. She's right. <laughs> she, I guess she. Um, I do like doing my do my own projects at home. That's one thing a lot a lot not a lot of people know. I'm not very good at it, but. I try to do do it myself uh, once in a while, um, and I, you know, with this time off, I've been able to do some stuff. So it just, <laughs> it's coming along. Uh, do I want to direct? Uh, yeah, yes and no. But directing is all encompassing. I mean, you have to know everything about everything, and it's it's pretty intense. So uh, yeah. there might be something I would like to do with a series that I'm on to um, to put that in my. Uh, my contract, hopefully, uh, but it's definitely yeah. something I, I have my eye on. I, but I want to produce more, some more stuff. So, um, yeah, I want to. I want to start, you know, looking after my own stuff, that kind of thing, my own projects, and just coming together, coming up with ideas. And um, I know I've got some stories to tell. So, so writing wise, do you focus on um, film or TV or how? What are you working on? Uh, I'm trying to figure out where some of my stories would go. I think a few of them um, I was thinking as, as films, ideally, but I think uh, I was told by other writers or producer friends when I pitched the shows, they would like it actually be better as a series. It would be more longevity. You could really create this whole world. And so I'm like, okay, so that's, that's the kind of thing I, I'm looking at right now. Um, Cause it's hard always, you know, being at everybody's beck and call, right? To say, uh, will you hire me? Or will you know, I'm fortunate enough that every once in a while I get offers, but I still have to audition like everybody else, still have to do all that stuff. So, but yeah, my own projects, I'm focused on that. Well, I wish you the best. Oh, uh, Mike, you. this has been an awesome interview and I am just so in awe of your career. And I just think the world of you and I'm so excited to see what, continues for you and i'm sure oh, thank be you. tons more of amazing television and blockbusters and all the all the things um do you have a message for the fans oh the yeah uh, thank you man i love you guys you guys are amazing um and thank you for showing up to these things um uh, and i love you guys thank you thanks mm -hmm. for watching well, everyone loves you too.
Um, so everyone, I have put the links for Mike to follow him on Twitter and Instagram. They're in the description links below. So please follow him and stay connected. Um, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Mike. You are just the best. And I'm so appreciative of your time today. Uh, thank you, Simone. You rock. And uh, congratulations on this show. It's great. I'm so happy. Yay. For you. Yeah. Yay. Well, keep before watching, people. Keep watching. So before we take off, I'm just going to announce my next guest uh, for May 26th which is a couple weeks away. Uh, Tuesday, May 26th, I have Roger Cross, who we, oh. yes, we love him. Uh, Roger Cross played Six on Dark Matter and Detective Lucas Hilton on Arrow. He was also in The Strain. He was a lead on 24 with Kiefer Sutherland. He's worked on video games like Call of Duty, Ghost Recon, and he's acted on The X-Files, Stargate SG-1, The L Word, The Outer Limits, Continuum, and the new TV series, The Coroner. So please join me Tuesday, May 26th, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2100 GMT, and 2300 CET. Oh, that was so great. Well, I love you, and I love you to all the fans. Thank you so very much for tuning in. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, like and share this video, and hit the notification bell for um, notifications on my new videos. All right. Lots of love, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>